What's up, everyone? It is your doctor coming at you once again from the x lair with a very special statue of your favorite Aurora Monroe Storm character design. Or one of your favorites because, I mean, really, there's just so many and they're all so damn good because it's Aurora Monroe Storm, one of the greatest X-Men characters to ever be created in the history of X-Land. Um, first, let's give her a little spinny spin and you can check her out. She's very cool. This is like her flying pose uh, statue form, uh, which is... You know, different from the museum uh, uh, statue form that you've seen. Um, actually, you haven't seen it in one of my videos because I actually converted my museum pose of Storm in this costume into a modern version. But um, recently there was obviously a modern version, a museum pose version of this Storm release which is simpler and it kind of has her in like a more compact area. This was the first statue of Storm that was released. Um, now I'm about to figure out exactly when and who did it and whatever. But there was this one and there was a variant of this one made as well, like a white costume version of Storm. Um, and obviously there's like a cloud base. It's like very elaborate. She's flying. It's very dynamic. It's definitely not... Um, a simple statue and it's really impressive I love it I think it's really cool like I originally bought the white costume version um, the Jim Lee era white costume version at like a local comic book shop it was maybe like the fifth or sixth statue I bought and then this one was always sort of one of the ones that I intended to get but um, you know just it took me some time to like sort of build up the the uh, the justification for getting it uh, once I've decided to get sort of like team displays going. All right, so um, let's check out some information here. Oh, she's flying. How surprising. All right, so there were 3,000 of these made in 2002. So this statue is actually 11 years old. And um, this is number 1280, and it was, it was sculpted by Mr. Mark Newman. Surprise, Mark Newman, a great sculptor, did this statue. I mean... The guy's a master of sculpting, and obviously, like, he's turned out some amazing pieces, including, I believe, Mr. Sinister, um, which I may have posted already, I may not, but he's fantastic and definitely a favorite. Obviously, the guy knows how to, uh, like, juggle a lot of detail in a statue. Um, you know, creating a, a, a flying person on a cloud is like a challenging endeavor and he took it on and did it so the guy's like super talented and i'm so glad that you know for however long he worked for bowen i don't know if he still works for them but uh how, however long he worked for them i'm so glad that you know we got some amazing x-men statues out of it so the base actually is supposed to have some uh lightning bolts coming out of it there's like some some slits in the rock that you can that you can see uh on the video um so I've left those out of the display because um, they're, I don't know, they just they just weren't my favorite. It was like kind of difficult when I was dusting as well, like they would fall out and I just decided to not include them in my display, but they are a very nice touch and they're like yellow lightning bolts. There's like three or four of them and, or I think there's three and they, uh, you know, they add that extra sort of like stormy quality to storm, you know. Why not? Why not throw in some more stormy qualities to a character named Storm? Kind of makes sense. All right, so let's talk about this design. Um, like I said, this is like a very important. This is a very important design for Storm. It's the original design of Storm. It's the design that we saw Storm in when she was first introduced in Giant Size X Men number one, and um, it's the one that she basically maintained for um, quite a while after that. Um, some of the important stories. Uh, that involved uh, her in this costume were, you know, like this, the Phoenix Saga and the Dark Phoenix Saga. All Everything that went on with Jean kind of becoming the Phoenix and all that, like Storm had, um, had this costume. So like you can see here, this is like when, you know, the X-Men get captured by the Hellfire Club and, um, and uh, you know, Sebastian Shaw's about to kick some butt, but you know, we know that Wolverine's coming, but here you have Storm in this costume. Um, 
That was number 132. This is number 129, a couple issues before. This is actually the first appearance of Kitty Pride and the White Queen in this in this um in this issue. So I, this era in which Storm had this costume was like super important for all the the characters and the current X-Men universe that are just super important um and it all sort of evolved from this period so it, this is kind of like the seminal period for the x-men for storm and so this this um this costume kind of holds a lot of weight as far as like significance for her as a character and just looks really cool i mean and i mean mar newman did a really nice job um just you know just having her uh not only displayed beautifully you know within her costume but also in like a lovely pose that kind of shows off a lot of elements and maybe some surprising elements like one that you're seeing here her butt with a g-string um, not something that you would expect to see <laughs> in a statue of this sort but apparently like uh, you know it's appropriate for the character design so screw it I took some close-ups of that for those that are um, butt connoisseurs are interested in seeing you know how how accurate uh, the butt uh, sculpts are I don't worry folks you'll, you'll get some close-ups of that on my blog post so uh, check those out um so a, a couple other like kind of noteworthy things to mention um as far as like this design and its appearance in comics um so when uncanny x-men number 500 came out alex ross like the god of like painted covers you know who did all the kingdom come stuff for dc and just kind of kind of like revitalized like the the artistic approach to drawing superheroes by kind of you know raising the bar on you know the realism of their depictions uh he actually did some variant covers of number 500 so here's one of them um and here's storm and it's actually signed by alex ross what's up alex ross you signed my cover um but here, here she is in the costume uh super iconic and um this I, this is actually i think okay so this was the one that was released and then there was like a dynamic forces one that's like more exclusive and i think particularly to like a uh, maybe like a comic con or something and um this one i like better it's kind of it's got the whole team in it um in that era and again it's an alex ross cover again it's signed yay and here you have storm in the costume um another kind of really cool thing that I, I know i know people that are fans of this costume are more into like the classic tales or whatever but i really like when Marvel kind of goes back and does some like, uh, I guess you could call it ret uh, retconning, so retroactive continuity by kind of telling different stories in an era that already passed and is sort of like considered classic, but you know leaves some sort of gaps in storytelling, uh, so you know s storytellers can then you know create sort of these new tales within those gaps. Um, and this is an image that's actually from um, a X-Men First Class, which is like they did. A, so Marvel did a series of First Class uh, like miniseries, which featured a ver like it featured the original five X-Men. And then they did one featuring the these X-Men that were introduced in giant size X-Men and um, the covers. And I think maybe the internal art was also done by Roger Cruz, who's like a really great artist. I really like Roger Cruz's art. It's kind of got like that cartoony uh, quality, but it's like highly stylized and like very sort of uh, refined. So, so I love it. And he did this really great cover, which I love. It's just it's it, it looks like it looks like the sort of thing that would have been inside the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters, like in the in the hallway, like you know, as you enter the mansion, like that shows kind of like the various eras for the teams that it had existed in the past this looks like something that would have been on the walls there and so i have this guy displayed behind um her and the rest of this team is actually this exact team is who i have displayed um in a in a display setup which i have yet to post a photo of on my blog i'll be doing that at some point some point in the future but um i don't know this is like sort of like a pretty nice uh simple tight group of X-Men that are like really great to look at together and so seeing the display together with this image and actually I have another image which is also a uh, sort of a depiction of a Roger Cruz X-Men first class a cover um, 
behind it. They they both like do a really nice job of sort of enhancing the quality of the of the display of the statues, just kind of bringing bringing the display more into giving giving it more connection to like the actual stories um, via like some some actual art, which you know obviously like I mentioned before is not like classic art, but it is sort of a uh, a take on the classic character designs and classic era. So hey, love it. Love that stuff. Love these designs. Obviously, I love most eras of the X Men, and I I'm willing to give a lot of love to each one as much as I can. You know, as much as my wallet allows. Um, as far as this era goes, like there are a couple of statues that I've uh, that I've not gotten yet uh, because you know I'm just like trying not to get everything, um, and so and so uh, like there's the. Ben, no, the Sunfire statue that was released maybe like last year, which is also which should also kind of be in this era, but I don't want to go that far with getting every single statue from that era because they're expensive. But I'd like to because it's actually it's actually very impressive. And then the other one is Thunderbird, Thunderbird, the brother of Warpath. There was a museum statue pose version of that statue of that character released last year also and I opted not to get that one as well but I think it would work really nicely in this group I also need more room because I'm I'm, I'm kind of like at capacity as far as like the room for these displays so if I were to get those it's it's also a, a space concern I would like to expand like the surface in which I have the display set up in order to be able to include those two without it looking cluttered you know I want it I want it to look like it's like a it's like a comic cover come alive or like a comic panel come alive, you know, rather than just have a bunch of stuff in, in the place just because I have a bunch of stuff and I need places to put them. You know, I, I want there to be a purpose to my displays. And so that's another reason why I've hesitated on getting those other two. Anyway, uh, let's check out this beautiful statue in a, in a little more detail. I mean, you can see definitely a lot of uh, a lot of detailed uh, close ups of this statue um, on my blog post. I took a bunch of photos. But she's a beauty, um, from her face to her toes, just gorgeous. Um, obviously, the cloud is like very well done, and it looks great, and it 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 balances her out well, and um, and together they they just make this really beautiful sort of statue of Storm. There was actually, I believe, there was a mini statue version of this of this of this particular statue um, created as well. So. If, you, you like the statue and you'd like to have something similar to it, but you're kind of, you know, you're kind of feeling, you know, like the pinch of, uh, uh, of, um, of not being able to afford all these statues because they're expensive. I mean, they're expensive. Uh, there's, there's a smaller version of this one that you'd, you'd be able to get. There was also a smaller version of Colossus made and um, Phoenix. Um, and uh, I think Cyclops as well of this era so you, you could actually do like and there's a Nightcrawler as well so you can do like a nice little set um, of this era's X-Men that are smaller and not as expensive that's possible so for those that are sort of starting out and maybe younger and don't have as much disposable income like you know there is there are op op options for you um, so yeah, again, just going back to the design of the statue, it's really beautiful. It's, uh, I mean, obviously it depicts the costume exactly as it was designed in this era. Um, she's got the really cool boots with the nice cutouts um, towards the top of her legs, which are really cool. And then she's got like this like one piece like swimsuit that I guess um, she has to wear when she's flying because um, maybe I have no idea why it would to me it would seem as though like because she's flying and she's higher up in the sky she's gonna be colder and so she would require more clothing but you know as far as like making the character sexy and visually appealing I understand why uh, she would be wearing this kind of like g-string one piece with like this gold ring in the middle it's very sexy the statue is very sexy on um, the design of the character of the costume is very sexy and um, they did a really great job. Uh, Mark Newman did a really great job sculpting it and just sculpting the body around it. And then um, he made the choice of making the the, um, the swimsuit kind of glossy, which looks very nice. Um, and then you've got this cool brooch that she always kind of has, like uh, towards the center of her chest, that kind of connects her uh, her cape uh, to her uh, to I guess the one piece. Um, 
and her cape, I guess, is intended to help her like be more aerodynamic while she's flying. So, it's I, I like her cape because it's really cool. It's got like that that kind of double a double pronged uh, design where it looks kind of like wings. And of course, because it opens up in the middle, you get to get a nice look at her butt if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking just to look at some butt, um, the nice the the, the the natural design for the for the cape for storm allows you to uh, get a nice butt shot if that's what you're looking for. Um, uh, and of course, beyond that, her face just very beautiful, just very elegant, lovely, kind of stoic and confident. Um, she's got the whited out eyes, which are lovely, um, and of course, she's got that really cool like kind of headgear thing that the this thing that she has. Um, across her head which is like just classic storm design and then of course the white hair which looks really nice and, and is layered nicely and just looks nice um so the i mean this is this is a very nice statue it's one of four storm statues that exist by bone designs in this scale uh there's a, like i said there's a white costume variant of this there is a um punk storm uh museum pose statue which I've featured on my blog and on my YouTube channel which is beautiful and has her in her 80s like punk look and is very cool and then of course there's a variant of that one in this costume which is like just her just kind of standing there and kind of has her arms out like ready to sort of like you know um, cause some lightning to destroy Sinister's brain um, that one's very nice as well. They're all very nice. If you can get all of them, kudos to you. If you're only going to choose one, um, obviously, if you're going to choose one between this one and the museum pose version of this of this design, um, it's going to come down to your space limitations. Um, because as far as the designs go, they're both really beautiful statues. Like this is a really beautiful statue, and so is the museum pose one. They're both really nice. This one's done by Mark Newman. The other one's done by Mike Cusinelli. So. Um, it would be hard to choose between them if it was basic, if it was just, if it just came down to the, you know, whether, um, if it just came down to the, uh, design of each one, it's hard to say which one's better. They're both pretty damn good. I mean, I love this dynamic pose and I love the museum pose. I love them both. Um, and another interesting thing to mention is that Sideshow Collectibles has actually recently released a premium format figure which is like a one quarter scale statue that has not just like um, resin, like kind of like a sculpture, uh, uh, a sculpted sort of uh, statue, but there's like an extra element in there, like a mixed media element, maybe like some cloth or that's basically what it usually is like, so, like a cloth element of the costume. They released a storm in a costume, in this costume that's a premium format figure. Um, I personally didn't like it too much. There was something about it that just didn't grab my complete attention, but it's a very cool statue. And if you like this costume, then that would be another option for you to get. Um, eventually, I'll post some photos of that one on my blog in case you haven't seen it and um, are interested. Uh, just just to have you know, just another place to reference it. But I personally don't plan on getting that statue anytime soon. Uh, mainly for a couple of reasons. I mean, beyond just me not loving the design completely, like it's a space concern as well. Like. One quarter scale statues tend to be bigger um, and tend to require a lot more room to display them in. All right, folks. Well, let me give her one last twirl. You can see how beautiful she is. Aurora Monroe, as always, looking great. She can't help but look great because, well, I mean, she's just a beautiful character. And uh, she's a great leader and one of my favorite X-Men. And I hope you enjoyed the video of this Mark Newman statue from 2001. I have plenty more stuff to come, so stay tuned. Thank you all for checking out my blog post on my blog, X-Men Statues of Future Past, .blogspot.com. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel, which is Dr. Remy Lebeau's x -Lair. And as always, X in the box, because ain't nobody checking me. I'll catch you all soon. Take care of yourselves, and goodbye.